Hello friends and welcome back to a little coffee club. Today we're going to be taking a look at the niche dual and niche zero comparison. I want to put this up as a Friday video. Hopefully I made it happen and hopefully today's Friday. <laughs> it should be the Friday after I posted that, that small cinematic sneak peek video as to the niche duel. That video kind of was well received. It got quite a few views and I received a couple of new subscribers. Thank you. Thank you for joining our little team here. And I figured that I would try to follow up with another Friday video, uh, do the comparison and explain a couple of little details as to why on Sunday or this last, the last video that got posted, which was Sunday after. Okay. So let, let me see. How do I explain on, on, fr on last Friday, last Friday, that sneak peek video was posted on Sunday. You got another video. And if you saw that video as well, the niche duo was not even on the counter and the setup was different. There was no niche duo, And you might've been wondering like what happened. And that's kind of the reason why I wanted to make this uh, video for the next following Friday. So I could explain when you guys see a Friday video, that video is kind of out of sequence with the other videos that I have ready to post. My Sunday videos, what's going to post, you know, this coming Sunday is, is something that I probably recorded maybe two months ago. The only way that I can stay consistent with the Sunday videos is by having them already recorded in the pipeline somehow, or some of them, uh, I already finished editing and, and I scheduled them to be posted. Some of them, um, editing as I, as I'm speaking now, some of them, um, maybe doing the thumbnail and posting them and adding them to my YouTube schedule so they can come up live and, and they'll be posted. So I wanted to explain that there is a delay on the Sunday videos. I just started recording videos again after coming back from vacation. You know, I already recorded an un unboxing video and first like impressions of the niche duo video, and that will be on our regular Sunday schedule. So as soon as you see that video come up on a Sunday, from then on out, you should always see the niche duo on my counter. Okay. <laughs> but not, but now for the next few Sundays, there's still some videos that are going to be, uh, coming up that were already scheduled to be posted on YouTube that are already finished. And all of those videos have to come up before we eventually catch up here with all of our regular videos. And then you start seeing the niche duo all the time on the counter. Okay. So, so this video being a Friday video and all of my Friday videos, by the way, if you see a Friday video come up, that means I just recorded it. This video I'm recording now on Saturday and I will edit it tomorrow, Sunday and, you know, hurry up with the whole process and have it ready for you guys for this coming Friday. So when you see a Friday video, it's less than seven days old. That video I just recorded and I posted it. When you see the Sunday videos, that's a video that I might've recorded two months ago. And that's the, that's the reason there's a, a real long delay there. I hope I explained that correctly. And I hope you kind of understand the process here and, and, and you understand why the next, for the next few Sundays, you're not going to see the niche do on the counter and you're not going to hear me talking about it or anything, because when I recorded those videos, I still hadn't received it. All right, before we even get going, I'm going to give you guys a timestamp right here. If you want to bypass all of my chit chatting here, if you don't want to hear any of the stuff that's been going on and why I have all these coffees up here, if you just want to get right down to the comparison and me come tasting the two shots, see if I could taste any difference. Again, this is from the view of an average consumer. Okay. This is from the view of an average consumer, an expert, I'm sure can taste the difference. Okay. I'm just like a lot of you guys when, you know, we're average consumers, hobbyists, maybe a little bit more than just average consumers. We're hobbyists. Okay. We're into the coffee hobby, but we're not experts, especially me. Okay. I'm never claimed to be an expert. I will give you my honest opinion. As of now, I've never been able to taste the difference in grinders. I have a few of them and to me, they all taste very similar. You know, I can taste the difference in coffees for sure. I can taste the difference depending on the extraction, um, especially on the timing. You know, if the timing is way different, you will taste an obvious difference on the shot. But if the timing is basically roughly the same and everything is went down basically the same for me, 
you know, the coffee just kind of tastes the same no matter what you ground it on. Okay, so today we're going to see this is the very first time I do this kind of comparison with a flat bar grinder. So we're going to find out. So if all you want to do is get right down to the comparison, I'm going to give you a timestamp right here. This is already brewed the coffee. You didn't see the puck prep. You didn't see me chit chat about any of this stuff. And maybe you don't care. So go right to this timestamp and, you know, see if I could taste any difference between the two, the two grinders. And for all of you that, you know, you guys enjoy this one hour videos that I seem to always make, then let's hang out for a little while. Let's talk about a few things. And then we're going to, you know, do some pug prep and pull a couple of shots and compare the niche duo and the niche zero. Okay, so the reason I have all of these coffees up here, you might not have even seen, I don't think the, I don't think the video for the black and white has posted yet, but you will see, I reviewed this coffee. I talked about it in two or three videos. Um, this is a co-ferment and it was, a, it was an experience. You guys will see that pretty soon coming up on the channel. I also have this coffee here from Good Brothers. And again, I'm showing this on, on a Friday video because all of this kind of will be upcoming. Okay, there'll be a lot more on the niche duo, uh, you know, more comparisons, all, you know, coffee reviews, all this stuff. I have actually have so many videos that I want to make that I would need to make like two or three videos a week just to be able to catch up and be done in like a, a couple of months. There's a lot of things here that I want that I want to get around to doing and trying and I just haven't had the time. I'm just an average dude. I have to go to work. I don't have as much time to, to do YouTube or anything like that. During the week, I have like almost zero time. So on the weekends, when I'm home, because I haven't been home a whole bunch a lot either. So, uh, you know, I haven't been able to work on the videos. Anyway, I do have this coffee from Good Brothers. I can't wait uh, to try it. Uh, it's kind of like a co-ferment. I think they added strawberries with this one. I, well, I don't want to give too much away, okay? But be expecting a review on this. I can't wait to get around to it. Um, you guys will see the black and white and what happened with that. Okay, then we went on vacation. I already recorded three videos while I was on vacation. I had promised you guys that I would do some coffee brewing outdoors, outside, and I did do it. I recorded two of those videos. We also visited some coffee shops, and that's why I got these two bags. So... Honeybee is a coffee roaster and coffee shops in the Pigeon Forge area of Tennessee. You know, maybe I'll put a couple of pictures here somewhere on the screen so that you guys could see a little bit of our adventure in Tennessee and kind of let, let it be like a little appetizer for what's to come in the upcoming videos here on the channel. Another place we visited was the Dripolator. Dripolator, again, another another coffee shop and roaster. That one is in the Asheville, North Carolina area. We visited the Billmore Estate. If you've never been to the Billmore Estate, put it on your short list of things to see here because it's phenomenal. It's my second time there and I enjoyed both times and, and it's just something you, you have to see it. So, okay, so I'll put a couple of pictures here on the, on the screen so you guys can see what it's all about but it's a spectacular house, okay? Something that will take your breath away. So yeah, we did some visits to some coffee shops. We have a lot of coffee to review. This is already recorded. The black and white's already recorded. You guys will see that pretty soon coming up here on the channel. I'm not sure what's gonna post this Sunday, but anyway, you, you guys will see. There's a few videos already scheduled to be posted. And then we'll catch up with the niche duo. You know, you'll see this setup behind me all the time with both grinders. Oh, something else that came up. Somebody left me a comment saying that, hey, how come I wanted to upgrade from the niche zero to the niche duo? And that's not the point at all. It's not an upgrade. I don't, <laughs> you guys will see my first thoughts and today we'll compare, see if I could tell any difference. It's not an upgrade at all. I want both, okay? I wanted both right from the beginning. When I bought the Niche Zero, the Niche Duo didn't exist. And when I gave my little review of the Niche Zero and my first impression video on the Niche Zero, I talked about I wish that Niche would make a flat grinder that looks exactly the same, but with some nice, large, flat burrs. At that time, nobody knew that that was coming. And well, then a little bit down the line, you know, <laughs> we got the Niche Duo. So I always wanted it right from the beginning. My idea with the Niche Duo is to mainly use it for pour over coffee. And, you know, I want to see if I can taste a difference in pour over. And we'll do that comparison too. you know, Niche Zero and Niche Duo in pour over. 
I'm a lot more likely to taste a difference in pour over than with espresso, although we'll find out today. So by the time I get around to reviewing the Good Brothers and the Dripolator and Honeybee Coffee, all these coffees up here, uh, you know, I will be grinding on the niche duo and you guys will see that. Uh, oh, and one more, the, more, the most important coffee review I have coming up, the most important one, I almost forgot. I have it off to the side here. I received a little bit of coffee from Carrie. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. That's so awesome. Anyway, Carrie, you guys know it's uh, regular here on the, on the videos. Carrie sent me a little bit of coffee. It, it, it's from Flower Child. So Flower Child was one of those roasters that I had on the watch list that I, I want to order, eventually get around to ordering from. And well, now I got a little bit to try. So we will review that. Maybe that's the first one I'll review from all of these. So we will grind that on the niche duo and taste it. And I'll give you guys my opinion. Another thing that's coming up on the channel, by the time, oh no, but I'm putting this up on a, on a Friday video. So you will see this before I'm actually uh, out of town. But, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be out of town again. This time we're going to be visiting London for, a, <laughs> for just for a weekend. Kind of crazy trip. But I know New Forest Explorer, and you know, I know his name, I saw his name, but I since I, all, all the time what I see on Instagram and on Facebook is New Forest Explorer, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but you know who you are, New Forest Explorer. I know he's from over there. I wish I had time to visit and maybe have some coffee, but this is a weekend trip. Another thing is I reached out, that, that would have been kind of fun to bring you guys along. I reached out to, uh, I reached out to uh, a Square Mile which is another roaster that obviously, uh, as a matter of fact, when I come back from London, I will bring some uh, whole beans from Square Mile so that we can review and taste here on the channel. But Square Mile, you guys know, is James Hoffman's coffee roaster and he's based there. So, you know, I reached out to them to see if uh, maybe I could stop by the roaster and take some pictures or maybe get a couple clips. That would have been a lot of fun. But they did reply. They told me that right now they're doing some renovations and there's construction going on and they can't really have people, you know, going in there that maybe next time. They did tell me to uh, visit a, a coffee shop. I can't remember the name. Maybe I'll put it here on the screens, but we're definitely gonna visit that coffee shop. I also reached out to Niche. Uh, Niche doesn't have anything set up that you could just visit. So, but they also gave me a couple of suggestions. I'll, I'll put it here. I'm pretty sure we'll try to hit those coffee shops and bring back some coffee and taste it here with you guys and tell you a little bit about my experience out there. I can't wait for that. And yeah, that kind of brings you guys up to, I think up to speed as to what's been going on. Uh, let's, let's, you know, let me set up the lighting and set up all the stuff on the other counter and do some pug prep and compare the niche duo and the niche zero and see if we could taste any difference. All right, so this coffee is already dialed in on both grinders. And if you guys saw the, well, you, actually you're gonna see this video before you see, before you see the other video, and weeks before. So when I give you guys my, 
uh, unboxing and first impressions of the Niche Duo. Uh, you know, uh, how do I explain this? Okay, for me to dial in the very first time, I had to pull three shots. And on the third one, yeah, I believe on the third one, I was able to get a good shot. It's pretty much what I was looking for. I wanted to slow it down a little bit more. And I made a, uh, later on in that video, you will see that I made another little adjustment and it didn't seem to slow down at all. Almost, as a matter of fact, that shot ended up being just a couple seconds faster than before I, before I adjusted it. So I did another little adjustment. I think I'm all the way down to three. Let me, let me, let me double check. You guys are gonna see on my uh, first impressions and unboxing that, you know, the lid barely clears under my counters. I, I show you guys all of that, you'll see. Then in, in order for me to like really look at the setting, I have to kind of lean the, uh, the niche kind of forward like that. It's, it's not ideal. I mean, there's just not a lot of clearance. Maybe if I put it where the zero it's at, it might work a little bit better just because it seems like they're like the same, but uh, you know, no. Over here, I can kind of see off to the back of it like this better. Um, you know, you will have to be in my point of view to kind of be able to see what I'm talking about. But anyway, I am all the way to like two and a half right now. I mean, that is really almost down to zero. And I imagine I'm gonna have some coffees that I'm gonna have to grind even finer than this one. So that means pretty soon I'll be below zero. So I explained to you guys in my first impressions, that's, that's one of the very first things I thought of. I might have to do some kind of calibration, although it comes factory calibrated, I might have to recalibrate this somehow so that my grind size moves up a bit and I'm going down, uh, maybe down to like zero, but not below zero. And right now the way it looks, I think I'm for sure gonna have to grind below zero sometimes for espresso. Another thing that I'm noticing is that the range for you like fine tune your grind, I don't think it's gonna be quite as wide as it is on the zero. On the zero, I think you're gonna have more flexibility in regards to the range that you can get a good shot in. Okay, here it's a smaller range. Since it's a, a stepless grinder, you should be able to still fine tune it, um, you know, as much as you like, pretty much. But, but definitely the range that you have, usable range that you have to dial in that shot, I think it's gonna be a lot more narrow, okay? And, you know, again, you, you, you gotta watch my other video, the first impressions, just, uh, you know, if, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Uh, that, those videos with uh, all about the niche duo are gonna start coming up on the channel eventually here in a few weeks, okay? But for now, I wanted to bring you guys this so that kind of explain why there's a delay on, on my videos. It's the only way I can stay consistent on Sundays. So the next few Sundays, those vi videos were recorded a couple months ago and they already scheduled. All right, but anyway, the coffee's dialed in. We're gonna be <laughs> like two and a half on the duo and grind size is 13 on the niche zero. Hopefully we'll get about a 35 second shot at nine bar with about a 20 second pre-infusion. And that's where this coffee is tasting really good for me. This coffee, although it's a medium roast, it does kind of have a, uh, like a medium kind of a level of acidity. And I don't like that much acidity on my, on my espresso. I want to get it sweeter and kind of like a rounder taste, sweeter taste. And by kind of lengthening your shot time, usually that's what happens. You, you will cut out some of that acidity and bring in some more sweetness. So that's what I'm gonna shoot for here. It's dialed in, so let's just dose out our 18 grams and we're gonna pull our first shot. Gosh, I hope I'm explaining everything correctly here, but <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Okay, first, let me make sure the focus is locked. Okay, the focus should be locked right there. Let's get our 18 grams. And of course, on this channel, we always check retention, so we'll see if we get any retention on the duo. Seventy-nine. Okay, 18 grams. Guys, I wish I had more time to work on my videos, but you know, it is what it is. I'm just a regular dude. <laughs> I don't have as much time. So 
you know, I do what I can. Maybe one day if we reach the, finally reach the thousand subscribers, we'll do some lives. So something like this, I can somehow condense, maybe already have the shots pulled and just talk a little bit to you guys and taste the two shots and tell you the difference and do, a, do it in a live so I can be more consistent with Friday videos and bring you things more kind of like up to date like that. So, so there's not such a, a long wait between me recording the video and actually and, you know, posting it and for you to see it on Sundays. But for now, you know, it is what it is and that's the only way I can stay consistent. Let's grind the 18 grams. All right, here we go with the duel. Okay, I always start it one more time just to make sure all the beans went through. I tap the little spout and let's see what we got. Okay, there you see it, 18 in, 18 out. Maybe 17, nine, maybe. But you see it's kind of fluctuating between 17, nine and 18. Pretty much what I put in is pretty much what we got out, so. Okay, on the first vi uh, video that I recorded, the first impressions and unboxing, uh, you guys will hear, hear me also talk about, uh, you know, the experience of grinding with it. Um, so far, how I find, uh, I think the niche duo to be a little bit more messy. I talk about the noise level or the grinding noise that it makes and uh, compared to the zero, all of that stuff is already recorded and coming up. So you guys will see it. Okay, so I always start by just fluffing up the grounds here in the catch cup. I have a feeling that retention is gonna be pretty much the same on the zero and the duo, where you're gonna get a 0 0.1, 0 0.2 maybe, you know, if it's not spot on, which usually it's either spot on or again, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 off, and I don't even worry about that. Okay, so I haven't pulled any shots, so this is dry. Again, tamping station, I know, I know guys, I know. Come on, Posado! <laughs> if you've been watching all the, all the videos, then you know what's going on with that, but there's, uh, there's some plans, there's some plans ahead. <laughs> all right, let me rearrange the camera here. Okay, now from this angle, I should be able to do the rest of the puck prep, do some uh, WDT. Again, I know by now everybody's talking about Lance's new discoveries as to WDT. You know what? I'm not fully on board with that uh, to each their own, right? Uh, I like doing WDT. I think it definitely helps. I have seen in my own personal experience, I have seen uh, quite a bit of difference uh, WDT versus no WDT at all. Now, as far as the needle size, well, you guys saw, uh, again, I, I have some videos here on the channel already talking about that and trying the different size needles and stuff. You guys know what happened and my whole take on that. So if not, look through the videos, you'll see the comparison of WDT tools. Okay, I'm gonna tamp with the Lelite tamper. Again, with this one, I just always get it pretty much level. With the uh, Passado tamper, I kind of struggle because of that beveled edge. And it's, uh, again, if you've been watching all the videos, then you know all about that. You guys know that I use the puck screen because it just keeps my machine clean. Uh, let's lock in and pull the first shot. Okay, so I should have all the cameras running here. Hopefully I don't miss one of the angles. You know, somebody left me a comment. I think I already mentioned uh, that, you know, that I'm taking, that I probably take too long between locking in the Porta filter and pulling the shot. And that may be so, 
it's been like maybe three or four minutes now and now I'm all set up here and, and ready to go. So, but keep in mind that I don't film every shot that I, you know, that I drink and I have done plenty of shots where I lock in and pull the shot right away and I don't notice, you know, any difference that I could say, oh yeah, there's a, there's a difference because I'm, I'm taking long. You know, maybe some people might be able to tell, um, you know, I, I, I don't doubt that. But again, you're getting, you're getting everything here from a, like an average consumer kind of point of view, not an expert. All right, let's start the Akaya. Let's pull our first shot. Okay, so I'm gonna do a 20 second pre-infusion. You guys know how I, oh, all right. You see why it didn't tear? That's because cleaning it, again, I lost the automatic espresso function like I told you guys before. So now I'm going to have to start tapping and setting it back up. And again, by, oh yeah, you guys haven't seen me talk about all of that. You're going to see pretty soon. You're going to see pretty soon. <laughs> There's a conversation that happens as to the coffee scales. So again, subscribe to the channel, check it out. There's a lot of things going on here. You're going to see, you, there was some that happened guys. You, you're going to see, but all right, let's see if we can turn this thing back on. I have to start now tapping and Oh my goodness gracious. I can't even get it to. All right, I'm gonna have to stop all the cameras, figure this thing out, and then start again. Hold on. All right, so uh, I did my best to try to get that espresso mode to come back on. I couldn't figure it out. The Akaya up until now has never glitched at all. And the last time that this happened is because I cleaned it and you guys will <laughs> You guys are gonna see on an upcoming video. I talk about the scales. I explain a little bit about that. And you know what? We're gonna have to use the time more. So the show must go on. I don't have time now to start trying to figure all this thing out in the middle of recording. So let's go with the time. <laughs> this one has the switch and that's the way to go, man. There's no doubt about it that, you know, the switch is just, is just a, a feature that's missing on the Akaya for sure. Okay, let's go. So, okay, we got the A flashing. Okay, we should be ready to pull the shot. Uh, we start at five o'clock, so put the paddle at five. Make sure all my cameras are recording. Okay, I think I, I, think I am. All right, here we go. It should be dialed in, so let's see. Okay, here comes the pressure. Try to level it off around two and a half. Oh, went a little bit over. Okay, we're starting to get drips, 20 seconds. I'm gonna start opening it up. Okay, this is a beautiful, nice ramp up to nine bars. I'm gonna get it all the way to nine, right there. And if it starts to go down slowly, I will let it, I will let it go slow by, I will let it go down slow by, its, by itself. Okay, so I do a one to 2.5, so that means 18 in, 45 out. Uh, I almost hit that right on the, right on the spot. 44.8 in 31 seconds since first drip, 48 seconds overall. We'll see what kind of a shot we get from the zero, but this is spot on what I was looking for. I'm gonna give it a quick taste test and let you guys know what I think. Then we'll compare, but for now, let me taste it real quick. Let me stop, let me stop some of these cameras. I can stop this. <laughs> yeah, maybe I take a little long sometimes to pull the shot this time for sure, because of what happened. You know, I, man, I, I have no clue what, what happened with the Akaya. I'll try to figure it out later. I'll let you guys know on a, on a future video. But anyway, let me taste it. It's quite hot, but wow, yeah, the taste profile of this coffee is very classic, but yet with that acidity, the extra layer of acidity and like berryness that the coffee has just adds an extra layer to like a classic taste profile. You know, it's, it's sweet, like caramel, like chocolate. You do get that chocolate and caramel, uh, like a brown sugar, molasses type of flavors and to me, this is, this is perfect. It's a spot on shot. Mm. It's still very hot, but the flavor, it's all there, all present. 
Let me set up real quick and we'll pull a second shot and then compare with the zero. <clears throat> All right, so I think what happened with the Akaya is that I actually forgot how to turn those modes back on. And this is the second time that this happens to me because when you go clean it, you start hitting all the buttons because it doesn't have a little toggle switch, which would be such an easy fix, like the time warp. But <laughs> whatever, there's not a perfect product for anything. It's always like a give and take. Okay, let's dose out the next 18 grams to see if we can get this show on the road. Uh, I'm gonna use this. <laughs> Should I use it? I'm not gonna use this cup today, no. Okay, I'm gonna use the regular niche cup. Uh, if, you, if you've been watching, well, you got, <laughs> I'm got a lot of spoilers again today. Every time that I record one of these Friday videos and I talk a whole bunch, I always talk about things that haven't happened yet. Or at least you guys haven't seen them yet. They happen, you haven't seen them yet. But all right, you're gonna see some that happen. And, all right, anyway, join us here on the channel. Join the team and you'll see a lot of my little mishaps going on here in the, <laughs> in the kitchen. All right, let's go, 18 grams. So yeah, the thing that happened with the Akaya just now is the second time that it happened, but I thought I remember how to, you know, switch on the mode again, but I didn't. I already took a quick look at how to do it and I already turned it back on. But still, I'm gonna stick, man, maybe we'll go to the Akaya now. I already turned it on. It should work. Okay, so there you guys see it. We have 18 grams, okay, right on the spot. Let's grind on the zero. Again, on my first impressions, there's a lot more that, you know, I'm not gonna get into today that I talked already on that video and that's gonna be coming pretty soon here on the channel. Okay, so this one is grind size is 13. And we should be able to pull a very similar shot. What do you guys think about the, the setup? Anyway, it's looking pretty nice, pretty nice. You know, these are the same little flowers. I've had them for more than a week now up here and they still look great, they're, they're surviving. <laughs> All right, let's see if we got our 18. Uh, 17.7, so on the niche, we did have a little retention. Usually a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, I don't care about it, but when it comes to 0 0.3, then we use our little bellows. Use one of these little things to get the, the retention out. Some nice little control plunges. So if you do it a little bit too aggressively, you're gonna have a little mess on your counter. All right, so let's see. Let's take a look if we got some of it back. Usually it comes right back. 17.9, close enough. Seven, eh, well, between 17.8 and 17.9, but I'm gonna roll with this. This is close enough. I don't think I have any kind of problem. Let me reframe this back up here and relock the focus. Okay, we should be locked uh, right there and we should be ready to go. So yeah, there is a plus and a minus to almost everything in life. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Okay, let's fluff it up. All right, so let's do some pug prep again. You know how I'm feeling that previous shot from the duo that it looked really nice, the extraction. The flavor is definitely right on point. It's exactly what I get from this uh, when this coffee, when I get it right. So I'm really happy with that first shot. Let's see what we get on the second shot. Okay, you guys know my workflow when I go from shot to shot on the, on the Bianca. But basically everything's hot now and we are ready. We move kind of quick between shots, so it's not like a lot of time has passed. The other shot should be nice and nice and hot still. Let me reframe the camera here. Remembering to always lock this focus and stuff has been a, 
a game changer as far as with the video quality. Okay, do some more WDT. Okay, this WDT is from Passato, which I have a, an ongoing thing here on the channel. <laughs> Passato! Oh boy. Oh, you guys haven't, you know, since I'm recording this video, since I'm recording this video, and you guys haven't seen some of the things that have happened, which will be coming up on the channel on the Sunday videos. I'm gonna introduce you guys to Mr. Pesado right now. Miss, this is Mr. Pesado. He has become something here on the channel. You will see him uh, more often moving forward, but <laughs> you'll see what that's all about. But yeah, that's uh, Mr. Pesado. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, I'm gonna bother them so much that one day, magically, I'll receive a, oh, you know, I don't even mind, I'll buy it. But, you know, I want that tamping station. I want them, Pasado to make me a tamping station wood with the same wood like this. You see this look? I really love that. I really, really love that. I want a tamping station with this. So I'm gonna keep on bugging them until one day, one day they give in and make me a tamping station. <laughs> you know, that might never happen, but we can only hope. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna tamp again with the, let me show you guys the other tamper, okay? I'm gonna still tamp with this one because I wanna get the extraction. Um, yeah, I wanna give myself the best chance of getting a good extraction. But this is the tamper, this is the tamper from Passato. It has the same wood like the WDT tool on top. And it came with that other little shorty white catch cup. And I, again, there's more stuff coming on the channel in regards to that. I mean, we've talked about it before, but there's, there's some new things, new things, you'll see. You will see. Always the, when I record these Friday videos, a lot of spoilers. And my knuckles always crack. Yeah, somebody told me that I tamp too, too hard, but you know, I kind of keep it, try to just keep it the same all the time and not worry so much about the, um, uh, you know, the effort I'm putting into it. Okay, so here we go. This is our our second puck prep, this is, uh, puck screen is hot, everything's ready to go. Let's lock in and pull a second shot. All right, so here we go, here we go with shot number two. I think I got all my cameras running, all the angles. The other day I was um, uh, recording and you guys will see it, you guys will see it. Another little spoiler, but Right towards the end of the shot, the camera that records uh, down here, <laughs> the bottom of the, of the Porta filter, it, it, it ran out of memory, right in the middle of, well, not in the middle, but towards the end of the shot, and I didn't get all of the shot, but sorry, guys. So I think I turned on my uh, automatic espresso mode back on, and let's see, let's see, let's try the Akaya. Again, it never glitches. The problem is that it doesn't have the little toggle switch. You know, this, nothing's perfect, nothing's perfect. What are we gonna do? It's Posado's fault. Posado! <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, again, we're looking for the same exact extraction, about 20 seconds, then I'll ramp up, and maybe 35 seconds at nine bars, something like that. Total shot time should be just under one minute. Okay, here comes the pressure, level it off. There we go, around two and a half. Pretty much the same, we're starting to get some drips. Okay, here we go, 20 seconds, we're gonna go to nine bar. Nice and, I didn't get it as smooth as I did on the duo, but, but not bad, pretty close. You keep opening it up there, keep it at nine. Again, we're doing a one to 2.5. So at 45 grams, we stop it. Okay, let's see. All right, this one we finish at 44.2, 39 seconds since first drip, 53 overall. It overall is pretty close to the first shot, right? Pretty close. Uh, let me give it a, a quick taste test. Get my scale out of the way, swirl it.
you know, <laughs> let's go to the other counter and talk about it. Um, yeah, let's compare them. Let's go to the other counter. This shot is great too. So I can't, eh, I would be happy, equally happy with either shot, but I'm gonna have to taste them side by side to see if I could taste any difference whatsoever. So let's go to the other counter. All right, so we got both shots ready to go here to give it a, a taste test and a comparison. We'll see if I could tell any difference. Again, I've never been able to taste difference in grinders and I have three of them that I've compared here on the channel. You can look through the videos and find it. Or you can ask me for the link. Anything that I mentioned that I already recorded and you wanna see that video, uh, leave me a comment and I'll reply to your comment with a link to that specific video so it just takes you right into it. All right, so let's see, this is the first shot. This one is from the, the Duo. Let me swirl it. This one had a chance to cool. It's still hot, but it's not, I'm sure it's not gonna be as hot as the, the one I just finished pulling. Okay. All right, let's see. Cheers, I hope you guys brewed something tasty to go along with me here. Okay, can I taste any difference? <laughs> okay, if I can taste any difference, I'll tell you right off the bat, it's subtle. Okay, it's not a big difference that you're like, oh yeah, for sure. Oh man, this is this, this is that. I bet you if you give me 10 shots, five of them pulled on the duo, five on the niche, I'll get like half of them wrong. <laughs> Maybe I'll get all of them wrong. All right. And the mouth feel, there's definitely a difference. On the niche, it's thicker and gooier, the shot, okay? That is, I can detect that more than the flavor difference. Let me see if I can detect anything else. Yeah, it's not a big difference. It's not a big difference. But this coffee, it's a little bit sweeter. Um, and you know what? People say that you can, like uh, the separation of flavors. You know, I do see that. But is it drastic? No, no, it's not a drastic thing. Um, I wonder how it's going to be with uh, pour over. I'm more interested. Like I said, I, I think I'm a, I have a better shot of seeing... Uh, an appreciate a, a difference that you can appreciate on a lot more on filtered coffee than on espresso right here yeah you know it's a, a, a small difference the the niche uh, zero it's a little bit gooier thicker mouth feel uh, and on the niche duo you get you you do get a little more less blending of the flavors if that's a thing But um, I mean, it's a slight difference. It is a slight difference. It's not, to me, it wouldn't be worth paying nothing more for, more for the one than the other, okay? And if you wanna be able to like, be able to taste a, like, a, like a difference that you're like, wow, no, wow, what a difference. I, you know, I, I, can't, I can't taste it. I'd be lying if I told you that, that oh, it's way different. No, it's, they're very, very, very similar. You shot the, the, the two shots pulled, uh, you know, very in a, in, a, in a very like manner, right? They were both pretty much identical. And the difference here is slight at best. Yes, there is a little bit more thickness and gooiness to this shot. Yes, this one is a little bit lighter in mouthfeel and maybe, 
the flavors uh, are less blended. That's the only way I can I can say. Like the tartness, it hits a little bit different than this one. The, the acidity, the little bit of tartness in the coffee. Yeah, yeah, there's a, a slight difference, okay? So, yeah, <laughs> you know. Now, when it comes to filtered, we'll see. For espresso, slight difference, okay? Slight difference at best. Uh, the workflow, uh, I want you guys to see the other video, my first impressions and the unboxing, which will be coming up here in a, in a, I don't know, in a few weeks, okay? It will take a few weeks. So the next Sunday, and you don't see the niche duo, I didn't get rid of it, okay? <laughs> This is my end game setup. Okay, this is what I always wanted. It looks beautiful. I love it. Uh, give me some time with it. Okay, let me try it. My whole intention is to have the duo for filtered, the zero for espresso, and have the best of both worlds. Yes, we can swap burrs. We can go back and forth. Uh, leave me a comment. What do you want me to test? What do you want me to try? You know, I have to review all these coffees. So maybe what I'm gonna have to start doing now is like review a coffee and do one of your experiments all at the same time. <laughs> because I have so many videos that I wanna record that me being just a average guy, I just don't have the time to do so many videos. <laughs> Who would have thought, right? That just doing coffee videos, you have so much material. Like there's so much to talk about. But you know, hey, uh, you know, it, it is fun. I gotta say, the, the coffee hobby is fun. And for, for those of us that enjoy making coffee every day, uh, you know, it's a hobby, like I always say, it's a hobby that you can practice every day, right? When you make your morning coffee, your little routine, uh, it's just, it's, it's fun. You get to enjoy your setup and the different tools, and it's really cool. So, coffee culture is pretty awesome. Anyway, um, I hope, oh, you know, I'm thinking, I always want to like, Oh, man, maybe I'll mix the last of this. I won't, I could, <laughs> I think I already tried them enough and I, I'm gonna see as much difference as I'm gonna see. I already saw it here. There's no reason to, to keep going. I think I'm gonna put this together because I really want a cappuccino. Maybe I'll include that here at the end. Um, yeah, maybe I'll film that for you guys. I don't, I don't know if I'll talk throughout the process, but if not, I'll put some nice music and enjoy me making a cappuccino because I really want one. So I'm gonna mix the last of this and, and yeah, make a, make a cappuccino with it. But I really appreciate you guys a whole bunch. Again, Kerry, thank you for the coffee. I, I really appreciate it. You didn't have to do that. But I do look forward to uh, checking it out and reviewing it. You'll see my uh, thought on the, on the flower child uh, coffee. I, I was gonna get it eventually anyway and bring it into the channel and try it out with you guys. And, uh, but now I have some, so thank you so much. Thank you so much. And again, we're gonna review probably after Carrie's uh, a Flower Child Coffee. Uh, I'm probably gonna review this one, the strawberry. I'm really curious to see what what's up with that. Uh, again, coming up here on the channel, you're gonna see uh, you're gonna see the reviews as to the black and white cold fermented lychee coffee. That is <laughs> a whole adventure. You guys will see. Um, we've talked already enough about the Congo Kivu. I don't know if those, all of those videos are up. Probably not, but you you will see them. Uh, I really love this one. Uh, and then we, we'll, you know, we'll review the Honey Bee and the Dripolator coffees and talk about the trip to Tennessee and our adventures out there. And uh, and yeah, and then I'll bring back some coffee from from London and we'll we'll talk, <laughs> we'll talk about the experience there. Maybe I'll run into James Hoffman. Say, say what's up. Take a picture with him. <laughs> put, it here. put it on the video. Anyway, all right, guys. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys a whole bunch. Uh, hopefully, I was able to keep you company here for a while. And, and hopefully, you brewed something tasty to go along with me here on this adventure. Is there a, a difference? Yes, there's a, there's a difference between the duo and the zero. I can, I can see it, but it's not drastic. It's not something that you should... Uh, run out the door to upgrade or anything like that. Now the thing is you should have both that definitely if you can if you can do it Just get both. It's it's super fun to just just have both and just go for your end game setup You know if it makes you happy go for it Anyway, thank you guys for being here with me. I really appreciate you guys a whole bunch Please give the video a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I'll see you guys next Sunday 
And well, uh, let's make a cappuccino. <laughs>